Is the rally running out of steam or are investors waiting to see that the profits catch up to the prices? What's going on here? I think understandably there's going to be some weakness between now and the end of the year as we see that COVID cases and fatalities are surging. I think investors have, you know, the right to kind of put things on pause and just wait and see. We believe in the global healing recovery. That's a fact. And the underlying data suggests that that will happen next year as we get the vaccine. But in the right here, right now, things could get worse before they get better. And like you said, stocks have reached all-time highs over the last couple of weeks. So I think the pause is a bit warranted. Is there anything, Samantha, that I should be thinking about as I look at my portfolio to position it for the next two weeks and then into 2021? What would be the keys that you'd look for? So I would say longer than a two-week time horizon, maybe let's say the next two months. We're expecting big <laughs> yeah. trends to emanate from the fact that the global economy is going to heal. So I'm looking at cyclical value, right? We're looking at these parts of the market that have been very underloved and saying, is it time to you know, leg back into it. So I know energy's up quite a bit, but we think of energy, financials, value, just basically things that have not done well to date. We think the recovery is going to continue to broaden and it might just mean balancing, right? Taking winning positions, trimming them a little bit and reallocating to cheaper parts of the market. Let me turn to a guy who for me is never underloved, Ron Insana. As you react to what Samantha just said, <laughs> come, come by my house for a couple of minutes. <laughs> as you react to what Samantha just said about maybe moving your gaze toward some of those unloved sectors. Now, energy has been loved over the last couple of months, but would you agree yeah. that that's where maybe, if you were going to tilt one way as we get into 2021, that that would be the way to tilt? Yeah, and I think, Tyler, we've been talking about this for quite a number of weeks now, that uh, going from big to small, and again, from a rebalancing perspective, not a wholesale shift from growth to value, from domestic to international, those have proved to be very good trades thus far, and I suspect will be into 20 and 21. And I would agree also that, look, the market's due for a pause. I am worried about... Again, some of the speculative fervor that we've seen, whether it's in IPOs, whether it's in SPACs, I think those areas are bound to correct harder than the overall market. And these things tend to end badly. We know, and if you listen to Squawk on the Street with, with Carl, Jim, and, and David, you know, they've been talking about the fact that we've seen retail participation accelerate rather dramatically. And again, not to condescend to the individual investor, but we've seen this time and time again over all our careers, that this is late stage behavior. And some of this stuff will end badly. So I worry more about that. And then beyond that, still, as we've been discussing now for several weeks, I worry most about Main Street. It is still getting crushed. 100,000 restaurants have gone out of business uh, since September or thereabouts. Uh, we see small businesses continuing to get hammered by these new lockdowns. And so the divide between Wall Street and Main Street continues to widen unless or until uh, we get some sort of relief from the federal government. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.